Good evening. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church. This Sunday is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. In God's word, we are reminded that focused prayer claims what God wants for us, not what we want from him. We begin with hymn 719. Please stand for evening prayer, the Vespers service on page 215, page 215. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Be our light and scatter the darkness, and hear our evening prayer and praise. Lord God, we thank you for this day of grace now drawing to a close. Stay with us and warm our hearts with your forgiving love in Christ. By your word, keep our faith burning brightly, that we may walk in the light of your presence through the darkness of this world. Come and bless us as we worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing 
on page 217, Psalm 141. Let the incense of our prayers rise before you, O Lord, and let your mercy descend on us, that we may sing your praises with the church on earth and forever in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with Psalm 138, which is composed as a hymn. It's on page 138.
We continue with the prayer on the bottom of page 217. Lord God, grant us your Holy Spirit that we may hear and believe your word. Cleanse our minds and renew our hearts that we may live for you here and hereafter. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson is recorded in Genesis chapter 18. Abraham prays on the basis of what he knows about the Lord, that the Lord is a just judge, that the Lord shows mercy, and that the Lord invites us to be bold in our prayers. So the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very flagrant, I will go down now and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has come to me. If not, I will know. The two men turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Abraham approached him and said, Will you really sweep away the righteous along with the wicked? What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep them away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 righteous who are in it? You would never do such a thing, killing the righteous along with the wicked, treating the righteous the same as the wicked. You would never do such a thing. The judge of the, all the earth should do right, shouldn't he? The Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people within the city of Sodom, then I will spare the entire place for their sake. Abraham answered, See now, I, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it on myself to speak to my Lord. What if there are five fewer than fifty righteous? Will you destroy the entire city if the number is five short? He said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. He spoke to him yet again and said, What if only forty are found there? He said, I will not do it for the sake of the forty. He said, please do not be angry, my Lord, but I will speak again. What if thirty are found there? He said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, see now, I have taken it upon myself to speak to my Lord. What if there are twenty found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the sake of twenty. He said, please do not be angry, my Lord, but I will speak just once more. What if ten are found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is recorded in Paul's letter to Timothy, chapter 2. Paul teaches us that the ultimate purpose for everything we ask is that God's will would be done. First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all those who are in authority, in order that we might live a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and dignity. This is good and pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and mankind, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, the testimony given at the proper time. For this testimony I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I speak the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand in reverence for the Holy Gospel. is recorded in Luke chapter 11. Jesus teaches us how to pray and how our Father will answer. On another occasion, Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John also taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. He said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and tell him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine who is on a journey has come to me, and I do not have anything to set before him. And the one inside replies, Don't bother me, the door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give it to you. I tell you, even if he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his bold persistence, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. I tell you, keep asking, and it will be given to you. Keep seeking, and you will find. Keep knocking, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if your son asks for bread, would give him a stone, or if he asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, would give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. For him, 721.
How is your prayer life? Is it the key that locks up or that opens up your day in the morning and the lock that closes it at night? Do you pray at every meal thanking the Lord for his good gifts to us and asking him to strengthen us through the food that he so bountifully bestows upon us even though we don't deserve it because of our many sins? Are those the only times we pray? Do we go throughout the rest of the day without asking the Lord to bless our endeavors and thanking him for all of the good things that come our way each day? How about when you pray the Lord's Prayer? Are your head and heart there? Or are they someplace else as you simply mouth the words? How about when you pray in church? Are you thinking about the pot roast in the oven or the activities of the afternoon or the big game? An ancient church father, St. Bernard, once lamented to his friend how difficult it is for him to pray the Lord's Prayer without his mind wandering. And his friend said, I have no problem praying the Lord's Prayer. I can concentrate on every single word. And St. Bernard said, I'll give you a fine stallion if you do so. And his friend started praying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. And he looked at St. Bernard and said, Does the saddle come with that horse? Don't we have to acknowledge that there is a lot lacking in our prayer life? And that's why it's important for all of us to listen to God's word tonight, which says, pray as Jesus taught, understanding that it is a Christian's privilege, boldly storming God's throne of grace and expecting good gifts. One day, Jesus was praying, and when he was done praying, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. Maybe that's one of the reasons that there are so often things lacking in our prayer life. We forget that prayer does not come naturally. Prayer is something that needs to be learned. Being a Christian does not make us automatic prayer machines. Prayer is something that has to be worked at. Prayer is something that only can be done by God's people. And so before we can work at prayer, God the Holy Spirit has to work faith in our hearts. Only those who confess their sins and their complete unworthiness before God, only those who look to Jesus' perfect life and his innocent death on the cross for the forgiveness of their sins, only those who believe in the only true God, the triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, only Christians have the privilege of prayer. Now it is true that there are many people who look like they're praying when in reality they really are not. There are those who bow down on their knees with their face to the ground to the east towards Mecca five times a day. There are those in Jerusalem who are facing the Wailing Wall, genuflecting at the Holy Mount, the Temple Mount, appearing as if they are fervently praying. There are monks of the Eastern religions that meditate and seem to pray for hours and even days on end. And the unbelieving world thinks that that is so holy and that is so righteous. But the fact of the matter is not a single one of those prayers is heard or answered by God. Jesus said, only those who pray in his name, who believe in him, can pray. They can't pray because they reject Jesus as their Savior. They can't pray because they reject the only true God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Only those who trust in Jesus and Jesus alone 
for forgiveness have the privilege of prayer and thank the Lord that God listens to our prayers for the sake of the name of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. How sad it is that so often we fail to take advantage of this Christian privilege. How sad it is that sometimes we think that prayer is optional. We think to ourselves that I can pray when I feel like praying, if I feel like praying, but have no doubts about it. When we fail to pray or when we pray with our lips but our hearts and our heads are far away somewhere else, we are sinning. It is a sin just as bad as lying and cheating and stealing. Why? Because God commands us to pray. He doesn't command us to pray for his benefit, but for our benefit. He delights to come to the aid of his children in response to their prayers and petitions and intercessions. He eagerly longs to bless us in response to our prayers. How sad that so often we sinfully cut ourselves off from those blessings by failing to pray. But we can find great comfort in the fact that even those sins of our lack and lax prayer lives are covered up by Jesus' perfect prayer life. Jesus prayed perfectly. He prayed early in the morning. He prayed late at night. He prayed all night long. He prayed for his family. He prayed for his friends. He prayed for his enemies. He prayed for his government. As a matter of fact, the very last words recorded of Jesus from the cross were a prayer, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Think about that. As he's suffering the punishment that you and I deserved for our sins. He was fulfilling God's will for our lives. And his glorious resurrection from the dead assures us that we are forgiven of our sins and that our prayers are pleasing and accepted, pleasing to and accepted by our dear Father in heaven. May you and I take every advantage of that Christian privilege and pray with the proper attitude, that attitude of going to the Lord in prayer unashamedly, unabashedly, boldly and persistently storming God's throne of grace. And the Lord teaches us to pray in that manner through a, par through a parable in that parable a man had a friend to come to him in the middle of the night and knock on the door and the friend let him in, but he had nothing to set before him. And so he went to his friend and he knocked on the door and he said, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because I have a visitor and I have nothing to set before him. But the man inside said, I cannot. The door is already locked and my children and I are already in bed. It was the custom at that time that once you lock the door at night, you would never ever open it for any reason until the light of day because they didn't have night lights and you never knew who was out there. But the man persistently pleaded for the bread and finally his friend gave him the bread, not because of their friendship, but because of the man's persistent pleading. So also our God wants us to persistently Pray to him. Some people say, you know what? God, he's not interested in all of my trite little problems. I'll save prayer for the big problems. But there is nothing too insignificant and there is nothing too great to bend our fa Heavenly Father's ear over. He desires to hear all of our cares, all of our concerns all of our troubles and all of our problems, no matter how little, no matter how big. He wants us to pray for ourselves, for our families, for our friends, for our neighbors, for our co-workers, for our bosses, for our employees. He wants us to pray for our pastors and teachers. He wants us to pray for our elected officials. Now think about that a minute. 
So often all we ever hear about our elected officials is whining and complaining, and sometimes maybe you and I have been sinfully involved in that whining and complaining. But God commands you and me to honor those that he has placed above us. Tearing down our elected officials does not result in blessing. Rather, building them up with our prayers and intercessions will result in blessing. The story is told of how Sir Walter Riley Raleigh went into Elizabeth's, Queen Elizabeth's throne room with one of his many requests, and she lamented, Sir Walter, how often will you come bringing me all of these endless petitions? And he said, as often as you keep granting them. And so also we can boldly and persistently storm God's throne of grace with our prayers. He promises, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Sometimes we might be tempted to think that God doesn't answer our prayer. After all, I prayed for something, and I didn't get it. I prayed for something to happen, and it didn't happen. But we need to remember there are three answers to prayer. Yes, no, and wait a while. Thank God that our Heavenly Father will say no to our prayers. Just think how much trouble we would be in if God said yes to every one of our prayers. Maybe we pray for something that we don't realize is bad for us. And our loving Heavenly Father says no. On the other hand, maybe we don't pray for enough, and so God answers that prayer with a no and says, you know what, I'm going to give you something even better. And in addition, God knows when it is best for him to grant our requests. We might think that we're ready for something right now that we're praying for, but God might say to you, no, not right now, but when the time is right, I'm going to give it to you. In other words, we can be absolutely certain that as we pray confidently to our Heavenly Father, that He will answer all of our prayers and we can expect from Him to have good gifts. Jesus said, which of you fathers, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake, or if he asks for bread, will give him a stone instead? If you, though, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more won't your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The most important gift that God can give us is His Holy Spirit. And He bestows His Holy Spirit upon us through the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Word and in the sacraments of baptism and in Holy Communion. And as God's Holy Spirit is channeled to each of us in an ever-increasing manner, then our prayer life will be ever more fervent and ever more habitual. Then you and I will pray as Jesus taught, understanding that it's the Christian's privilege, boldly storming the Heavenly Father's throne of grace and expecting good gifts from the hand of our dear Father in heaven. Amen. Please stand. And the God of peace himself will soon crush Satan under your feet, the Lord be with all of you. Amen. We continue with the song of Mary the Magnificat on page 220. Page 220.
Please be seated. We'll present our rich and generous offerings at the Lord's altar. We'll pray the Kyrie on page 221. In our special prayers, we will praise God for granting Joan Lyston 90 years of grace on this earth. Please stand for the Kyrie on page 221. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the leaders of our synod and district, for all pastors in Christ, for all who are servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for all who govern our nation and for all public servants, that they may be upheld and strengthened for every good deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, for those who toil, those who sing, and all who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. To you, O Lord. Heavenly Father, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Joan Lyston, as she celebrates her 90th birthday and begins another year under your guidance and protection. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Amen.
Abide with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Abide with us and with your whole church. Abide with us in the evening of the day, in the evening of life, in the evening of the world. Abide with us in your grace and goodness, in your holy word and sacrament, in your comfort and blessing. Abide with us when we are overcome by the night of sorrow and fear, by the night of doubt and affliction, by the night of bitter death. Abide with us and with all your people in time and in eternity. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the closing hymn. Good evening once again. Two more announcements. The August edition of Forward in Christ is available on the information station in the narthex. Also, August 21st, we will be having a church picnic. Please sign up if you're going to attend, and also please sign up to donate some food. And starting next Sunday, we will have a food, this Sunday, we will start our food drive 
uh, for the seminary families, and there's more information about that in the bulletin. As the usher greets you, say hello to those around you, introduce yourself to those you don't know, feel free to visit with one another. Thank you.